Hello! Bandits kill Catalea's parents in front of their child. The little girl manages to escape her pursuers and survive, finding refuge in her uncle's house in Chicago. Catalea has been preparing to take brutal revenge for years. But will the fragile girl be able to defeat her longtime foe and his gang of reckless thugs all by herself? Columbia, 1992. At a secured country villa, concealed in the middle of the rainforest, Fabio and Don Luis, longtime friends in the world of crime, have a leisurely drink while discussing business. Fabio hands his ally a hard drive with information and, after a peaceful goodbye, leaves. As soon as the man's white shirt disappears from view, Don Luis orders his subordinate Marco to eliminate him. A fake smile disappears off Fabio's face as well. The man realizes that his time is numbered if he does not act quickly and orders his driver to get home immediately. Once there, he gives his wife and daughter, Catalea, 10 minutes to pack. Thinking through the worst case scenario, Fabio providently gives his daughter a memory card and a business card with the address where she must go to save her life. Around his daughter's neck, the man puts a parting gift, a pendant in the shape of an orchid, after which he had named the girl. After packing their suitcases, the family does not have time to escape. Don Luis's mercenaries are already surrounding their house and waiting for the signal from their boss. First, shoot Fabio's bodyguards and then break into the apartment. In front of Catalea, first her mother and then her father are killed. Shocked by what she saw, the girl remains seated at the table as the assassins enter the room. Marco sits down with the girl to discuss what happened. The man acts friendly and wants to keep Catalea alive and give her whatever she wants. But in return, he asks for the drive that belonged to her father. But the orphaned girl's only wish was this. To kill Don Luis. Catalea rushes to escape. She makes a jump from the roof and cleverly overcomes obstacles, descending and climbing ladders without giving her pursuers a chance to get close. After hiding for a while, Catalea thinks the men have lost her. But outside, a gang of pursuers surrounds her in cars. Jumping into the only possible shelters, the sewers, the girl makes her way downtown and guided by a note with an address, finds the specified place, the US Embassy. There, she surrenders the secret drive, telling them that it was sent by her dead father. On a private flight, the embassy sends Catalea to Miami, where after easily escaping supervision, she takes a bus to Chicago and with the help of street thugs, searches for her uncle Emilio. In Chicago, the girl begins her new life with a family breakfast at her uncle's house. She excitedly tells him that she wants to be like Xena, the warrior princess or assassin, and hopes to get help from a relative. Having promised to fulfill her wish, Emilio takes his niece to school. In spite of the school year already being in full swing, the principal, along with a large bribe, agrees to take Catalea, who is not happy with this development. Emilio manages to make it clear to his niece that waving a gun is half the battle and that to become a professional assassin, you need to understand how the world works. California, 15 years later. A pair of cops are munching on burgers in their vehicles when a red car crashes into them at full speed and a drunken girl emerges with empty bottles in her hands. The officers handcuff the girl with the orchard pendant around her neck and take her to the station. At the officer's desk, the girl begins to vomit and is sent to a cell for the night. That same evening, Marshal Warren shows up to the station to lead a convoy transporting the criminal, Gennaro Rizzo, and this is where they must stay for the night. The criminal is processed and escorted to his cell, leaving him in a cell in front of the night warden's chamber. Meanwhile, in the woman's ward, after leaving the sleeping assaulter a coffee for the morning, the officer turns off the lights, whereupon the girl rises abruptly from her bed. With a hairpin, Catalea easily opens the locks and slips into the hallway, taking the coffee spoon with her. With a glass of water from the cooler, she makes her way to the electrical room. There, she puts the handmade construction into the ventilation panel and hides in the air vent. Once she gets to the fan, she waits for the system to shut down. Once her plan works, she easily slips between the metal blades in a matter of seconds and makes her way to the men's room, which the night warden is leaving. Hiding behind the man, Catalea gets close to the criminal cell and without delay, carries out her reprisal. The gunshots attract the attention of every guard in the facility. A siren wails and the marshal finds the warden with a gun at the crime scene and a dead Rizzo in his cell with the serial killer's signature message. The police rush to search the perimeter. However, the trained girl manages to sneak back into the air vent and get back into her cell where the marshal and officer find her just as they saw her before leaving. The next day, an FBI delegation led by Agent Ross arrives in California to investigate the murder. The team immediately goes to the morgue. On the abdomen of the murdered man, Ross recognizes the pattern that the serial killer has been leaving on the bodies of his victims for four years. Meanwhile, Catalea, after giving her fingerprints, freely leaves the police station. 
passing by Marshall Warren and Agent Ross, who are surrounded by reporters. On the way, the girl takes off the false skin that helped her hide her real prints. In Rizzo's cell, Agent Ross tries to simulate what happened at the time of the murder and ask for surveillance footage and materials on everyone who was in the station. After successfully completing her mission, Catalea calls Uncle Emilio at home, promising to return to Chicago in two days. The girl works as a hitman, just as she once wanted, and Emilio finds tasks for her. Agent Ross and his investigation team decide to give the media information on 22 murders with the same marks, guessing that there is a message that the killer is trying to convey to someone. A certain Mr. Richard from the CIA arrives at Don Luis's villa in New Orleans. A publication in the media does the trick. Richard voices his suspicions that the flower-shaped message is addressed to Luis and has something to do with his former partner Fabio, and forces him to find the killer in exchange for the favor the CIA did for him years ago by getting him out of the mess in Colombia. Hiding the truth from Richard, Don Luis realizes that Catalea is behind what's happening. She's talking to us. Catalea returns to her city apartment. After checking the security cameras and washing off the previous night, the girl also cleans her weapon. Meanwhile, Agent Ross informs the team of the results of his examination of the camera recordings, from which he concludes that the suspect was in the station at the time of the murder. He instructs his subordinates to examine each inmate's file and gather all clues, since one of them is absolutely certain to be the killer. Freelance artist Danny returns to his apartment. In the hallway, the man is alarmed to find that the door has been unlocked. Danny cautiously walks inside, but suddenly he hears an order not to move from behind him. It is the familiar voice of his elusive lover. The girl gladly throws herself into his arms and spends the night with him, then silently disappears again in the morning. Emilio arrives at the laundry. This is the place to meet Catalea. The girl has the foresight to stay away from her relative's house to keep them safe in case her life is threatened. The man hands her a new assignment. The next target is in the Caribbean. Emilio does not avoid talking about trying to lure Don Luis out and execute him calling it all a silly game that's dangerous for her life. But the adamant niece is not going to give up. Agent Ross is in the office, studying the drawing that the perpetrator uses to mark his victims. To help solve this puzzle, he's helped by an office employee who suggests that it's a Catlea orchid growing in Colombia. With this clue, Ross tries to find information in the CIA database, but his access is denied as soon as he enters the code word. Meanwhile, Catalea arrives to feed her fighting dogs raw meat. The trained dogs flawlessly obey her every command. Eat. In a luxurious villa in hot Mexico, Fat Willie has fun with the girls by the shark pool during the day and goes to the bedroom with them at night, ordering his bodyguards to enable increased security and lock every entrance. However, along with additional bodyguards, Catalea artfully infiltrates the house and, after waking Willie in the night, lures him out of the bedroom. The armed fat man recklessly steps out onto the indoor pool attracted by a tossed orchid flower. After trapping the outlaw, Catalea sends him to be eaten by bloodthirsty sharks with a single shot. Marco, the subordinate of Don Luis, arrives in Chicago. His boss has ordered him to eliminate Catalea, and the first thing he intends to do is to find and get rid of her family. The girl herself, having returned from Mexico, visits her lover Danny's apartment. She meets him in the evening in a romantic setting with wine and dinner, and as always, throws herself into his arms but the man stops her. Danny knows absolutely nothing about his sweetheart and tries to talk to her and learn about where she's from, where her relatives are, or at least what Catalea likes to eat for breakfast. The girl evades answering again, but agrees to his request to stay with him until morning. Waking up before his beloved, Danny prepares her breakfast and, fascinated by her beauty, takes pictures of the girl on his phone while she sleeps. Catalea rushes to meet Emilio to receive a new assignment. However, the man meets her with anger. He tells his niece about the murder of eight people in Miami, one of whom was his friend. Emilio is convinced that this is a message from Don Luis and asks Catalea to stop. However, the girl is obsessed with revenge, so Emilio has to fire her. The man informs her that he will no longer give her assignments. You can't do that. Emilio believes that Catalea can have a normal life, different from the ones that anyone else in her family has ever had. In a cafe, the artist Danny excitedly tells his best friend Ryan about his girlfriend. Danny shows his friend the only picture of her on his phone, but during the conversation, he suddenly sees a policeman outside about to give him a ticket and runs out the door, leaving his phone behind. Ryan immediately grabs it and calls his friend Sherry at the police station. Being a good friend, he wants to help Danny find out at least something about the girl and sends Sherry a photo to upload to the police database for a search. Agent Ross, running a photo search on Catalea from the police station, immediately receives information about it. After tracing the call, 
The man gets an address in Chicago and immediately sends a squad there. After a fight with Emilio, Catalea shows up at church for a service to see her mother. From there, Marco tails her relatives and figures out their address too. Meanwhile at the police station, the identity of the criminal is fully established, and Agent Ross orders the assault team to prepare for a mission. Catalea herself is at home at this moment, and missing her lover decides to call him. The call is traced by the FBI agents and 40 seconds later, they find out her location. In a conversation with Danny, the girl discovers that he took a picture of her while she was sleeping. Immediately sensing danger, Catalea checks the security cameras and sees a SWAT van pulling up. Having hung up the phone, she begins following her escape plan for emergencies like this. Catalea sneaks into her neighbor's apartment, where she keeps her combat gear in a hidden stash. And when the SWAT men place an explosive charge on her door, she does the same on the wall adjacent to the elevator shaft. The explosion blows the wall to pieces and the girl manages to escape while the FBI agents investigate her empty apartment. Taking advantage of a tested hatch in the ventilation system, Catalea enters the parking lot, disconnecting the security cameras on the way, which is immediately picked up by an agent. An assault team led by Agent Ross rushes down, but the girl escapes from under their noses by entering the basement of the building, and from there, making it into the subway. After escaping the trap, Catalea first goes to Emilio's, but Marco and his goons have been there before and left no one alive. Agent Ross returns home in the evening after the failed raid, and an ambush already awaits him there. Putting the agent in a chair with explosives, Catalea forces him to help her get to Don Luis. Because if you don't, you're gonna go to a funeral every week. The next morning, Ross goes to Mr. Richard at the CIA and tells everything about what happened the day before, not suspecting that before him is a man who is covering for Don Luis and therefore deliberately does not agree to give the agent any information, but a call from Catalea and a precise shot at Richard's head in a photograph brings the man to his senses, and on the pain of death, he gives out the address of the mafia boss. Armed to the teeth, the fearless Catalea sets out to exact revenge, and while Marco prepares a plan of defense, she already destroys the first floor of a luxury villa with a bazooka shot. Marco takes Luis into hiding, and he and a crowd of armed thugs set out to eliminate the danger. However, they are powerless, and the girl easily kills all of Luis's defenders, one by one, including his closest henchman, Marco. Having received no signal from him, the cowardly Luis gets out of his hiding place and tries to escape by jumping into the first available van, unaware that the angry dogs of Catalea are already waiting for him there. As always, you'll find the name of the movie in the description of the video. Let us know in the comments. Do you think that in real life, the thirst of revenge can turn a fragile girl into an elusive killer? And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next awesome retelling. Watch an interesting movie in a few minutes without rewind? Easy. We got a great looking audience tonight. The Sweet Popcorn channel has a mega convenient format waiting just for you. Short retellings of movies, from auteur films to Hollywood blockbusters. Pick up your unlimited ticket by clicking the subscribe button.